welcome to today's tutorial on how to reverse a B triple or B train. Now, you may be thinking, what in the world is this thing anyway? And it is a modification, first of all, download from the Steam Workshop. Link is in, no, not link, credits are in the description. Okay, now um, we need to look at this vehicle in two different parts. And this tutorial shows soon that you have learned how to reverse a B trip, B double already. But if not, then that is already that is also um, acceptable as well. Because what I shall be doing is to be able to allow you to be able to understand how to reverse a B triple in a progressive and easy fashion, hopefully. Now, what we have to do to change direction when reversing a B triple, and especially when trying to reverse park like what we are assigned to do right now, is we have to turn the pub trailer or the rear trailer. This is you might be saying, well, that isn't that right, Captain Obvious, but please bear with me for a second. Now, how does one turn the pub trailer where one wants? You see, one couldn't just reverse and hope that it would just go into the parking spot by itself. One needs to turn the middle trailer, or in, a ca in case of a B-double, without the front lead trailer, you turn your so-called the trailer which it which is the middle trailer here and in order to turn the middle trailer you need to use your prime mover and your lead trailer by moving these two parts you can move the rear trailer the middle trailer and let's say we have to reverse to the direction of the van we need to turn the rear trailer to the right, to the right of the lorry, as you can see. So as such, we need to turn the middle trailer in the opposite direction. And we need to push the middle trailer with your lead trailer, like so. And with a B triple, once you have an angle started, change direction pretty much straight away and let the lead trailer do its work. And so you can align the lead to the middle in order to reduce complications. And then your rear trailer starts turning. Now, as such, we can be in a position where we can get ready to straighten the entire lorry but not just yet now you can see the entire lorry is turning but as you can see the angle keeps increasing with the rear trailer when you have the two trailers aligned as such when one reverses one needs to create an angle between if one wants to keep the same angle between the middle and the pub trailer, the rear trailer, one needs to create an angle between the lead and the middle. So, as necessary, as I usually say, reversing a B triple isn't difficult, but it, but it is a little bit, uh, what's the word? complex, but not complicated. Plenty of things to do, but not exactly different in any way, shape or form. As you can see, while reversing like this, you can actually maintain, pretty much maintain the angle between all trailers. You see, they have pretty much the same angle while we are turning towards the van. Okay, now you can see I do not have enough angle and the angle between our middle and rear trailer is increasing. But that shouldn't really be a bother. 
for now, but just so that you can maintain a rather acceptable angle when you when we try to reverse. Okay, now how do we straighten this thing? Now let's go forwards. You can say, oh, just go forwards. No need to bother straightening the thing. Well, that's 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 possible, but we actually need to practice straightening the entire lorry. Now, without any pressure, let us just practice straightening this entire entire lorry. Okay. Now, first of all, we need to push the middle trailer in order for it to align with the rear trailer, the pub trailer. So, turn because the the middle trailer will always go. We always turn the opposite direction of the lead trailer. You can just basically turn it the other way around and basically push the middle. Now, if you have driven B doubles, you say, "Are you using too much angle?" And I reply to that, "No," because with the B triple you need quite a bit of angle to turn the middle trailer using the lead trailer but not so with the middle turning the rear like a B double if you imagine the middle trailer being the lead of the B double but the interact the interaction between the lead and the middle requires you to use quite a bit more angle starting with about 20 degrees especially when you're trying to straighten the entire lorry now you can look at the alignment if you're looking from looking at the mirror, look at the, the alignment between the middle trailer's axle and the rear trailer's axle. And when you look at that, you can also m make sure that you're quite aligned in order to make fine adjustments later on. But also, a great tip is to look at the face of the rear trailer. When you begin to align, as you can see, when when we are rather straightened, you can actually see the face of the rear trailer, as you can see. Not very clear on this trailer, but you can see the face of the rear trailer here and also the white line there. Okay. But usually when we try to straighten, before the thing straightens, we will begin to slowly, slowly, very slowly, straighten the lead to the middle. Excuse me, I'll try that again. Okay. Now, as the middle is straightening to the lead, I shall begin to straighten the lead to the middle. Just gently now. And when they're pretty much lined, as you can see, begin to straighten the lead. It's about a 45 degree angle so that you can maintain alignment between you can sort of maintain the alignments between between the lead and the sorry the middle and the pup the rear and then bring everything back and here's the good part you see because we need quite a lot of angle between the lead and the middle to turn to turn sorry we need plenty of angle between the, the lead and the middle to turn the middle. It's more forgiving when you are, are trying to align the tractor unit, the, the head or the prime mover, to the lead, which means I'm pretty much aligned between the lead and the middle and the rear. As such, I, it's more forgiving when I try to straighten the lead. Sorry, the lead trailer and adjust as necessary. Like so. Now this isn't a perfect alignment, but it'll do for now. Okay, so the question that is on everybody's mind is that how do I actually reverse this thing into our assigned parking space? Good question. And the key to this is the positioning of the rear trailer. But first of all, I need to position the entire lot in order for us to be able to reverse two 
the parking space properly. Now, here's what we need to think about carefully. Do I stay close to the right and risk hitting the gate without moving the trailer to the parking space? Or do I stay close to the left and risk having the rear trailer hit the other trailers? Now, here's the thing. It, it looks safer to stay wide, to stay towards that side. But then, when one reverses a B-triple, one will realize that one does not have enough room on the right. Basically meaning that your trailers, pretty much the middle or the lead, or maybe your prime mover, your, your head, will hit the gate as such. It is usually advisable to stay slightly close to your parking space, just slightly, not too much. Basically what I would try to do now is to reverse close to that red container there, forwards, and then begin reversing. So I shall swing wide. What I'm trying to do is to position the rear tray first to where I want it to be, where I want the entire lorry to be. Okay, so that's pretty much where I want the, the rear trailer to be. And then I straighten the entire lorry, like what we've learned before quite a bit of ammo here, and then begin turning. Now, since we actually want to turn the lorry to the left, we can actually begin pushing the, the middle trailer straight away. Okay, now I shall begin slowly, and I'll need plenty, plenty of ant to turn, but right now it doesn't look enough. So basically, while trying to maintain the same position of the rear trailer, Going forwards, same, I mean, the trailer doesn't swing close to the right, and then begin to turn. Now, with this, we shall pretty much be learning on, learning how to knife a B triple. But usually knives are not recommended, but in order to correct knives, we need to use plenty of angle and and I have covered how to correct knives and how to use knives how to jackknife in the B triple in the B double tutorial which I have posted before. So. Now with this kind of reversing, blindsiding. We, prob we most likely have to get out and look to avoid risking the crash. So basically what I'm trying to do is to use the middle trailer to push the rear trailer 
to the parking space while trying to align the lead to the middle and pushing and finally pushing the middle back to alignment. But you see, if my lead unit is not reversing the entire train, then basically I'm just turning the lead. So this is so basically that's how we can maneuver separate parts of the units, which we shall be doing shortly. Okay. Pretty much we've landed ourselves into a knife here with the lead and the middle. Now we need to correct. So what do you do? Knife. This unit here. Now, especially when heavily loaded, knifing does hurt the tires a lot. Now, here's, another, here's a few techniques to correct. For now, if you have more than a 90 degree angle like so, the entire lorry will go forwards, as you can see. You see, the entire lorry is actually moving and it's actually going forwards while your head, your, your primal, your head unit is actually reversing. But actually, the rear is actually going forwards. That way, you can avoid s skidding and hurting the tires while actually reducing the angle between the mi the middle and the rear of the pump. Okay. Now I shall align. I shall select a nice a nice angle. Now you see, since we are almost aligned with the parking space, we need plenty of angle to turn the middle to a much smaller angle. So we need quite a lot. If But if you exceed 45, it's more difficult to recover, so... So it's quite a good idea to start at a 45 degree angle. Like so. Now sometimes with some lorries, by looking at the angle between the two trailers, it can be rather deceptive. It can trick you. So it's a good, it's a good thing to look at the alignments between the axles. You can see I have a tad more than 45, I believe. About 40, yes, quite a lot more. So the mirrors are still rather deceptive. So such aligning, no, no, reducing angle, and making sure that I turn this way in order to prepare to straighten the lead trailer. As you can see. just only have to reduce reduce the angle between the head and the lead trailer and the angle will basically increase now we need less just turn the head this way in the real world we should be getting out to look and we are actually looking very very poised to park we're almost ready to park now when you have the rear trailer straightened pretty much 25 to 50 to 30 Five percent of the of the parking is done. Now straight in the middle as we prepare to straighten the lead as well. And then basically knife. No, not knife. And then now knife the lead. 
if that's what, what what should be done. But but really, we should be using fortifies. But for simplicity, we should be knifing the thing there. Remember, if you use more than more than ninety degrees, the lorry goes forward. So basically, I shall be using about an eighty degree angle just to preserve the ties a bit. But we have a problem, as you can see. The lead, the middle is not exactly aligned, so basically we straight, um, straighten a bit to about a 45, and then we push the middle to align with the rear, once again, like we practiced before, or more if necessary. And then as we reduce the angle, everything gets a bit easier. So let's see. And then align. We're using the left mirror now, which makes everything a bit more difficult. Okay, now bringing, bringing everything together. Now I just get out and look once again. And you see, everything is not exactly aligned, but it is. Um, well, we have that thing there. In reality, we. We need to go forward and align ourselves again. So to stay away from that metal bumper thing there, which isn't really difficult. But if we do not, if we didn't have that met metal bumper thing there, we just align everything and reverse. <laughs> so basically, that thing, that thing really caused a bit more difficulty. <laughs> so what we can do now is, for simplicity's sake. It's just to maintain this angle, you see, because the rear trailer turns itself anyway, and it increases angle. As such, we can just basically keep this angle for a while, and then begin, begin aligning the middle trailer back as well. Just, just a touch, so that we can avoid hitting the metal. But apparently not. I'm doing my best to give the middle trailer plenty of angle in order to turn the rear trailer. trying to straighten or almost straighten the middle to the lead just to make sure that the thing turns and now I've lost lost angle so basically I have to go forwards again just to make sure that I can actually straighten the middle middle to the rear now that looks promising now I shall begin to straighten the middle to the rear And then straight in the rear to the parking space, or almost, if one is so desires, basically, for a really nice parking. But for now, that's possible, I guess, because we're almost done here. This is just refinements here. Now, just just watching the front front axle of the rear trailer, just making sure that that clears the metal bumper. I should not put too much angle, otherwise I have to start again. But really, you can just reverse in and, and just. 
Okay, so pretty much if we're trying to deliver, we're done, really. But just for the sake of a certain form of refund, just for the sake of parking nicely. But really, if if we just need to load the cargo, then we're pretty much finished. And remember, it's more for the lead and the middle is more forgiving, so I can use plenty of angle with the head unit, the prime mover. And we are sort of done. So perhaps this is it for now, and we shall see this reverse. Okay, so reversing a B triple, not exactly as difficult as one might think, as you can see, but this isn't exactly as a line as I would exactly want it to be, but in order to not waste your time any further. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and some closing remarks. Why be triples? Thank you for sticking around anyway. Why would I select to drive a B triple instead of a HCT or A train, a, a double? Now here's the thing. B trains, B doubles and B triples are more stable on the road and they give you feedback when the lorry is about to flip and also they are not prone to yawing especially when driving with plenty of crosswinds on slippery roads and such they are more stable handle better respond better and they are better when we are trying to evade another vehicle you may be thinking you're driving such a giant train why would you evade another vehicle anyway now here's a story Driving in uh, Finland, a B double turned, cut in front of me on a two way road, single lane. And then basically that guy was blocking the entire, entire road. And now I, I couldn't have slowed down. My lorry was a hundred tons gross. Couldn't have slowed down even with the powerful shake brakes of the Scania. Impossible. Now, I was, I had to wait until the lorry, until the B-double passed, and thankfully that B-double passed 
rather quickly, and there was enough to actually evade and stay close to the rear of the lorry, basically bringing my entire beat triple onto the other onto the other lane, which that was a really risky maneuver, but it had to be done. It just had to be done because otherwise I would have hit, crashed and hit that B double. Not a good thing when you have a hundred tons. Gross combination weight. Payload weight was 67 tons. Not a good idea. But the good thing with the B double, B triple is the entire lorry gives you feedback when you handle and it doesn't yaw about. It handles nicely. Like a B double and like a single trailer, perhaps even better than a single trailer. Anyways, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you have enjoyed... Sorry, I hope you will enjoy driving your B trains, whatever they should be. B double, B triple, or maybe perhaps B quadruple as well. Either ways, I hope you have a good, good day. I hope you stay safe and I hope that there shall be blessings to your life. Thank you.